ever wondered how to use microtones to spice up your jazz harmonies? Totally. I thought I was the only one thinking about that. Well then, let's dive right into it. The rabbit hole goes really deep on this one. Here between the lines. Man, I want to jam a bit. Is there any tune we can jam on in 31, Ted? Totally. Why not play blues together? Sure. Blues has a complex history. It was born in the south of the North American continent around the end of the 19th century. Many different cultures melted together, involuntarily, and all of them brought seeds for new music. And over the decades and centuries, it evolved into genres like the blues. Got it. I mean, religion, politics, instruments from the military, and homemade instruments surely had their influence as well. But how is that related to microtonality? Isn't it the stereotype that African rhythms are more complex than the European ones, and that's the other way around with harmony? Yeah, well, I guess partially, yeah, but microtonality is hidden everywhere around the world. In this case, however, we just need to take one further step on the map. You've probably heard about blue notes, right? Yes. Aren't they like notes like the minor third, the diminished fifth or the minor seventh played within a major context? Yeah, kind of. A typical explanation lies within the minor pentatonic, which is common in Western African music. Usually Western theorists say pentatonic music is simply based on fifths, but it's a little more complex than that. Blues performers actually bend the pitch to reach notes off the 12 tet grid. It is neither a major third nor a minor third. It can be everything in between. Ah, I think I get it. It's not a fixed scale. A blue note can be a lot of different things depending on its context and of course, personal preference. Exactly. And now take a look how West Africa is connected to Northern Africa and the Arabic and or Islamic culture. Did you know that actually up to 30% of the enslaved Africans were Muslims? Scales are put together differently in these cultural areas. If we translate some of their makamat into Western music theory, we'd say they make use of neutral thirds, notes in between the major and minor third. And the degree of the in-betweenness can change depending on many factors, for example its geographical location. This reminds me a lot of blue notes. Totally. I guess one can always go one level deeper and find potential connections. Yes. The peoples on Earth all dealt with more or less the same initial situations when first experimenting with sound. All cultures found out about the overtone series, but they all came up with individual solutions to organize things from there onwards. So I believe 31 TET can function as a system to make more different cultural approaches playable simultaneously. If we talk about blues and 31 TET, we can't not mention Mike Battaglia. at this music festival, it was, I think, Bonnaroo or Langerata Music Festival, and Gary Clark Jr. was playing. He was a great player. And I'm at this performance of his, and I'm like really like into everything he's playing, every note, every sound. And I'm like, I have this light bulb go off that he's bending. Everybody knows this if you learn to play guitar, but it, it like became very significant in that moment. <laughs> So he's doing that that guitar third, let's call it, that every guitar player does. But he's getting to that same pitch every time. And I had this moment where I was like, that is the note that he wants to play. He wants to play that middle third. If he wants to play a minor third, he'll play, you know? If he wants to play a major third, he'll play that. Or whatever. But if he wants to play this neutral third, he'll play and he'll get that every single time. And it's like a third note that he has clearly in his head that it, that exists. Like it, it's yeah. a, That was like a big formative experience, but it didn't really click until, I guess, earlier this year, last year, 
when I started to get really into Arabic music. So I had this experience where I'm in my car and I'm driving in my car and I'm doing Sammy's Rust uh, ear training thing. And he's singing these things and he wants you to sing them back. So I'm going and singing Rust. And Rust, for those who don't know, is basically this scale. One, a major, you know, your unison, your tonic, your major second, then this, this in between half flat three, right? Should sound familiar. Four, five, major six, and then likewise a fifth up from this one. You have this, and then you have this half flat uh, seven, and then the the alternate descending. Sometimes they call it rust. Just goes to a flat seven. Really, it's kind of a certain way of playing it too. But there's this little thing that you always hear. It's like something happens when you when you have a pitch for any microtonal scale, Arabic music or anything else. Once you like have sung and you feel where this pitch sits in your body, yeah, like again and again, right? And especially yeah. if you have a name for the note and a yeah. notation, it's very different than if you're just treating it like a bendy, weird thing in between 12 notes, right? And, like singing that as a note and just having it be a normal note and everybody's having fun, like makes it exist. It adds a layer of symbolic existence that you don't, that you don't like you say, you don't get if you just treat it as a bendy thing. It's the way that Macam music looks at music that I think is so powerful. And it has so many things in it that like common practice, Western theory um, doesn't really have. Each Macam has a sayir, which is sort of the general rules of, of how to form melodies in the course of an improvisation, the shape it should take, these modulations, like I talked about, the notes that are emphasized and the way they resolve. And just like the way you play the scale. Like learning Macam music has opened up my ears to, for like a lot even of Western music. Yes, like for jazz, for for it's like a really good. Ex I recommend it to everybody. You know, it's a great experience. So, so I go back to the blues. I go back to Hendrix, and it's like a flashlight has gone on in my ears to such an extent that I am like seeing all of these notes, like they're real notes for the first time. Like on the piano, I don't have this middle third, but I'm still, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm still doing the same thing, but now I can land here. And I just like that sound. I think it sounds great. I don't know. I'm like addicted to it. It's like, it's an obsession. Next episode, we'll be taking a closer look at scales in 31 Tet. And if you want to learn more about microtonality, check out our channel where we dive deep into other microtopics.